TV Crazy Man here with goofs and interesting tidbits from the fourth season of The Adventures of Superman. Before we get into it, let me just say the special effect the series had, which was pretty much flawless, was the performance of George Reeves as Superman. It's because of him kids all over America believe Superman was actually real. No one, but no one can do the things that Superman does, and that goes especially for flying. First, let's take a look at the episode Peril by the Sea. I want to mention the guest star because he is one of my favorite actors to see on screen. Claude Akins plays Ace Miller, the bad guy of this episode. He brings a gritty, realistic feel that's more in tune with the first couple of seasons. He was a pretty tough actor who was great at playing the heavy. Of course, I'll always think of him as the comedic Sheriff Lobo who hassled BJ and the Bear. In this episode, Superman is flying through the ocean to stop a torpedo. The sound effect is the same whooshing sound as when he flies through the air. That whole scene is for me the worst scene from the entire series. Looks like Superman is flying inside a toilet bowl or big sink. I guess this is one of those times when the lack of budget and, and time really hurt the uh, special effect. Here's one I have a question about. Is that when Superman demands that Aiken's character, Ace Miller, surface his submarine and give himself up, how did Ace hear Superman's voice underwater inside the submarine? Surface, come into port and give yourselves up. Don't try anything funny, I'll be watching you. Did they have microphones on periscopes back then so that you could hear what was going on the outside? If they didn't, I guess, Superman could have used his super ventriloquism from the comics to push his voice through the water and into the submarine. That's all I can think of. I can't come into this room because of the kryptonite. Now I've got a weed burner here I found in a tool shed. I'm going to try and burn the kryptonite up. <laughs> In the Deadly Rock episode, Superman can't untie Jimmy and Lois because of kryptonite in the room. Here's the goof. Why could Superman not just use his heat vision or heated x-ray vision as it was presented in this series to incinerate the kryptonite rock in the fireplace instead of going to look for a weed burner? Were they saying Superman's heat vision was useless against kryptonite? Doesn't seem quite right. He should have been able to destroy it from a distance, I would think. In the episode, The Big Freeze, a mad scientist figures out how to freeze Superman, stealing all his powers. But Superman can still walk and talk. But the funny thing is, his cape still flutters freely in the air, even though it's been frozen. Seems like they could have gotten a cape that was stiff for this one. Maybe used a lot of starch. Previously, a ball that was frozen by the same process became hard and brittle and burst into a thousand pieces. Now in the episode, The Girl Who Hired Superman, when Superman jumps from the floor up to the mantle over the fireplace, his cape moves upward, and this reveals that the film was actually run backwards. A few seconds later, they run it forward when Superman jumps down. I'm pretty sure they used the same method a lot for other shows in later decades, like The Six Men Are Man and The Bonic Woman, but they didn't have capes to give it away. There's another moment in this episode that I loved as a kid. How many of y'all were amazed when Superman tore the phone book twice? I guess I was thinking, of all the things that Superman did, this might be the one thing that I could pull off someday. No one, but no one can do the things that Superman does. In the episode Unlucky Number, a crook named Dexter is shot on the porch with an automatic weapon. He was unharmed due to the use of a metal plate in her shirt. The problem is he has no holes in his shirt right after being shot, which seems kind of weird. There's a fun scene in this episode where Superman, Superboy, and Batman comic books can be seen at a newsstand. Now this happened once before in season 2. Is Superman so popular he got his own comic book in his own world? I'm calling it a goof just so I can have an excuse to point it out. I think it's pretty neat having Superman and his comic books exist in the same world. Hold it. In the episode Joey, there's two thugs that show up at a corral where Lois and Jimmy and Clark are at to harm a horse, a racehorse. They stand almost in plain view of Lois, but she doesn't say anything about him. And it's also strange that with Superman super hearing, he doesn't hear the thugs talking to each other as they're planning their evil deeds. And they're so close that anybody could hear them. No chance to use this. Not with them hanging around all night. We well, don't have to. I knew someday I might have to resort to this. Clark, what are you going to do? In the episode The Jolly Roger... Clark is faced with a situation where it seems there's no way to change into Superman without exposing his true identity. 
This is yet another moment that Clark Kent removes his glasses in front of Jimmy and Lois, but neither recognizes him as Superman. Having noticed this several times since I've been doing the Goofs videos, I have to agree with some of the comments that this is probably an intentional running gag. Has to be. Having said that, though, I think that Clark could literally change clothes right in front of them, and Lois would still be like, where did Clark go? And Jimmy would be like, golly, Miss Lane, he was just here a minute ago. Hey, classic TV fans, if you like silly but family-friendly books that you don't have to worry about your kids and grandkids reading, then check out my Caveman Comics book series. I did the art, the story, the words, the cover, everything. I'm even responsible for hiring Ugg Lug to play Ugg Lug. Don't wait. Get on the bandwagon now before Ugg Lug is famous. So you can say you knew him when. You can find Caveman Comics at Amazon under my secret identity, Tim Frady. I just did bed. Hey, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and comment and like and gives me a lot of encouragement to keep making videos. Well, see you next time. And believe me, it'll be a pleasure.